Welcome to Land of House. I'm Seth. Today I am giving you my first look video of the Sun Gold Power 6000 watt 48 volt pure sine wave inverter and charger. This thing is quite impressive. It has tons of features. It weighs 100 pounds, so you definitely have to be careful whenever you pick this thing up. Now, I do want to say this is a first look video, so I'm going to be installing this out in my power shed and we'll do a more comprehensive install and see how well it functions under a heavy load. But for now, we're just going to take a look at its features, plug it up to a few batteries, and see how well this thing performs on a very simple task. And then later on, you'll get to see it perform under uh, uh, actual load. So anyway, let's go ahead and unbox this and then take a look at its features. Let's see what's in the box here. Have a good bit of foam to protect everything. Let's just pull those blocks out of there. Some literature. We'll get into that here in just a bit. Looks like a couple of tiny screws. Don't want to lose those. Here is what's probably a battery temperature sensor. I'll know more about that here in just a bit. This is a remote switch. Let's you turn the unit to uh, power saving on and off. I will probably have that inside of the house. And then we've got the inverter on top here. I'm probably just going to cut out the box because this thing is so heavy. I'm not sure I wanna pick it up. Do have some terminal covers over here. All right, let's see if we can get this box out from around this unit. Ugh. All right, here we go. Yeah. Oh, 100 pounds is definitely heavy. Now that we have this unit unboxed, let's take a look at its features. Starting down here on this end, you have the negative terminal, the positive terminal, and this is the 48 volt version as indicated right here. It has a remote port, so you can run, basically it's this same panel right here up into your home. It has the auto generator start over here. I may get into that if my unit can uh, use that. Battery temp sensor is down over here, and then the ground block is right here. There's a cooling fan that you don't want to block, and then there are some dip switches over here. And let me go ahead and just kind of give a quick rundown of what those dip switches are for. There are five switches in total. You can see the zero on the right side and the one on the left side. So switch number one is the low battery trip voltage. Switch number two is the AC input range. Switch three is the power saver auto setting, and that is night charger function or detect load per three seconds. Switch four is the output frequency setting. The zero position is 50 hertz, the one position is 60 hertz. So I'm gonna be using the 60, and that's why it's set over to the one. And lastly, switch number five is the battery or AC priority. So if it's set on zero, it's the utility power priority, or if it's over to uh, one, it's the battery priority. Now this unit is a charger and inverter. So up here, we've got a little dial that can be turned to have some different settings. And those settings are based on this right here for different battery types. I'm gonna turn this to zero for right now to mean that the charger is off. So need to find a tiny screwdriver and move that over. Over here, we've got power saver auto, unit off in the middle, or power saver off right down here on the bottom. And so basically, this will either allow it to be off, which it is right now. The power saver off means the unit is basically putting out full potential all the time. And then up here, we've got power saver, which it will do a pulse setting every couple of seconds to see if there is a load on here and it can save some uh, resting power. On this side, there's a large cooling fan, a couple of breakers up here, and then this is where your input for AC or output for AC is going to be. We'll get to that in just a minute. This is a 
240 volt split phase so you can uh, run uh, normal things like uh, receptacles in your home or you can have uh, larger applications here um, but for now that is the basic rundown of the outside let's go ahead and connect some things and see this thing operate there are tiny screws holding this cover on I'm just going to remove those so you can see what the input output looks like over here set that over to the side so if we take a closer look at this you've got ground you've got the AC input hot one and hot two up here you've got hot one hot two for the AC output and then neutral right here I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the charger by moving that switch over to zero this is going to be just a simple test to get some output from this unit. Remember, later on I'm going to do a full install. So I've got 48 volts over here with a breaker that I have on the off position. And I'm just going to use some 10 gauge wire for a simple output here. This unit needs to have a one AWG wire. So uh, it will hold 125 amps coming into this system at 48 volts. So. Keep that in mind that this is simply just a test, not actually an install. So I'm just going to put my 10 gauge here into my breaker, which is currently in the off position. I also have the unit off. The reason that I'm saying that it is off is because I need to make sure it's not going to have a big spark when it touches the terminals here. And to make sure I'm going to go ahead and use my multimeter to make sure that it is off. When you go to charge something like this 6,000 watt inverter, it can have uh, quite a spark to it. Yep, so we've got uh, 49.8 volts when it's on. When we flip that, we've got nothing. Very good. The top up here is the AC output. So I'm just gonna use a very simple setup here with a receptacle just to get some output from this inverter here on our simple test. So up here is the neutral wire. I'm gonna go ahead and lock this down in here. Like that. And I'm just gonna use hot one down here on the bottom and lock that down. And that should just give us enough of a test here with this receptacle just to get some power output. The unit is still off here. I'm gonna go ahead and flip the switch on the breaker to get this system going. All right, I didn't see anything happen. So let's see what happens when we put this into power saver off. Let me see here. I am hearing a bit of a hum. 60 Hertz, batteries 49.6, which is what I had previously no cooling fans yet let's go ahead and plug this 10 watt light up and see if it will turn on yes we do have output here very nice let's see if our display shows us anything different we have a one percent load that's pretty cool 49.2 volts, dropped it a little bit. Now let me go ahead and turn off. Now I'm wondering if I put it on the auto power, or the power saver auto, if it won't turn the light on because it's less than the 25 watts that it's looking for. Let's try it. I've got this next light over here, which I think runs at about 28 to 30 watts. And so it should trigger that uh, search cycle because this one so far has not so it currently has no load it's in inverter mode this time it says the battery is at 50 volts let's go ahead and unplug this and plug in the light that's going to pull more power and see if it will uh, find out what we need here so this one should turn on the unit waited 30 seconds no look on that one. Okay, I think I know what's going on. I flipped dip switch three so that it's now surging every three seconds. 
to find 25 watts. So listen. So if you can hear that surging. If I plug in this light here, which is, uh, I believe we said it was 28 watts. Check this out. It'll flash. So it's now finding that the uh, power probably just isn't quite enough of a surge to get that going. So now it's plugging that 200 watts and I anticipate this will surge and come on. Yep, there it goes. All right, so it has to have that uh, 25 watts, which probably must not surge fast enough for this light over here to come on. So, yeah, what does that mean? If you were to use this in the power save mode and all you're wanting to do is turn on LEDs in the house, then you may want to have some small load you can turn on long enough to get it going. Uh, with that thought, let's go ahead and, um, uh, so we know this one won't turn on by itself, but what if a bigger load finds here on the inverter? All right, so that one turns it on. Let's see if this will stay on over here. Okay, there we go. That one is on now. What happens if we unplug the big load? Yeah, so it's gonna keep that one on. Nice, so that would be the trick is to have something that's gonna be above that 25 watt just to keep your lighting on uh, if you're in that power save mode. The other two things that come with this unit are the remote and the battery temperature. So let's go ahead and try out the remote first. So it looks like the remote goes on this side over here. Now the unit is off. So I wanna see if turning this switch here is going to turn on the unit. So let's go to uh, just a regular power saver auto. Okay, nice. It does have its lights here and the unit is turning on up here. And there's its surge. Very good. All right, so that remote is working. And so we should hear it turn on full power whenever I do the power saver off. And there we go. Now it's doing what it's supposed to. Okay, we'll turn that off real quick. And then let's plug up the battery uh, temperature and we'll see if we get a readout here on the display. 50 volts still on the battery. I'm not seeing anything on the display that would indicate the temperature of this. So I'm guessing that's simply just a sensor that if the batteries reach a temperature that they shouldn't be, then this whole unit will shut down. I have the unit in the power saver auto. I want to turn this remote to the power saver off. See what happens. It's trying some weird stuff. So I think what you need to do is make sure if you're gonna be using the remote, that you just have this unit here on the off position. And then whenever you decide to adjust it, you can go into your home and push things from the remote. So anyway, it was kind of going back and forth there on uh, this display. This has been a quick overview of the Sun Gold Power 6000 watt pure sine wave inverter and charger, 48 volt version. I will be doing a full install on my outdoor power shed and we will run this thing with a lot more than 200 watts that we were testing out today. I'll also not have all of this. We'll use uh, the actual cable size it needs and we will run through more of its features. I may even attempt to use solar to charge this, um, to charge batteries up with this unit as well, even though I have a charge controller. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you have some comments, leave those down below. I'd love to read them. And be sure to subscribe and notification bell so you can watch the actual install of this unit coming up pretty soon. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Actually, let's go outside real quick and I'll show you my power shed. This is my little two foot by eight foot power shed and it's where I'm gonna be housing all of my electronics for my hydro and solar. Still needs trim and paint, but at least it's almost done.